Liberate IT is an Oracle NetSuite solution provider that has been servicing Australian and New Zealand companies since 2011. Alrighty, this is today's panel. We've got Paul Beatty, our general manager, functional consultant, NetSuite veteran, ERP extraordinaire, and history enthusiast, currently in lockdown over in Auckland. I know what you're thinking. How is he a NetSuite veteran when he looks like a young spring chicken? Well, when you use NetSuite, all the stress is taken out of your day, let me tell you. It helps fight the seven signs of aging. Over there on the right, that's me, Julius Haralampo, business development manager. I've been in the B2B tech sales space for over 10 years. I'm based here at the beautiful Gold Coast. Uh, and it's my job to identify companies that would be a good fit for NetSuite. Moving right along. So I'm going to start off with a very brief overview of Liberate IT, who we are, what we've achieved as a company. Uh, I'll jump into a NetSuite overview, and then Paul will take you through a live demonstration of just some of the features that NetSuite does. He obviously can't show you every single one of them. We'd be here all week, and we'll finish off with a Q&A. So if you do have any questions, uh, just pop them in the participants section uh, in the chat window within Zoom, and I will throw them to Paul at the end of this presentation. Liberate IT, NetSuite and New Zealand, uh, NetSuite New Zealand and Australia. We sell and implement NetSuite. We do nothing else but that. Uh, we are NetSuite specialists, NetSuite purists. So Liberate IT, we're a trusted partner for NetSuite in New Zealand and Australia. We were established way back in 2011 uh, by the same director who have been in the IT business now for 15 years. We're very, very proud to be New Zealand owned and operated. Uh, we have a really strong presence in Australia now. We've got over 100 customers across New Zealand and Australia. And like I said, we focus so, solely on selling and implementing and training and supporting NetSuite uh, for New Zealand and Australian businesses. We don't do any other software or hardware, purely NetSuite specialists. This is the traditional setup of uh, a business. You might have one piece of software doing your accounting, you're using something else for your inventory, something else for your e-commerce, another one for your support system. Each one of those squiggly yellow lines represents uh, a spider web of laborious processes, maybe a patchwork of Excel spreadsheets and other um, arduous systems that are holding a business together. It can lead to uh, a big patchwork of Band-Aid solutions. That's the old way. Where are those yellow lines going? Boom. NetSuite comes in. Now, the primary concept of NetSuite is to have all of the, sister, all of the systems incorporated by one central business platform and allows a single database and a central source of truth. Beauty of this is everyone's logging into the same system. All the data is held in the one system. What the CFO sees is going to be very different to what the sales manager sees. The vendors are going to have a particular dashboard. The e-com manager is going to have a particular dashboard. If there's a change made over here on the website, if there's a sale, if there's a refund, those figures are going to be reported directly back into the system and uh, reflected instantaneously uh, on the CFO's dashboard or anyone else's dashboard. Let me just move this. So since they're all logging onto the one system, a change in figures anywhere will be transferred across all the way up to um, the directors. Live and accurate data for all. This is the old way of accounting. When you had a small business, let's say sub 10 employees, you're using the likes of Xero, maybe even Excel, MYOB, QuickBooks, You'd make your way up to you know, green tree status, maybe using Sage once you started expanding. When you hit the maybe multinational level, uh, you're using the likes of SAP, Oracle. These days with next generation ERPs like NetSuite, we are a modular system. We expand and contract as your business evolves. We've got single use customers uh, with a single login to NetSuite. We've got... Uh, multinational customers that have over 5,000 licensed users. Um, we, NetSuite is a modular system, meaning we configure it to what your business needs, simply turning on and off modules according to your individual business requirements. 
jumping right along. This is Oracle NetSuite. How good is this slide? So NetSuite was built for the cloud. We never had to be downloaded. We never came on a CD. And we were built way back in 1998. That is before Google. I'll try to blast through this at somewhat of a speed. Um, really simple customization. Like I said, it's not really customization. It's more or less configuration, turning things on and off. Uh, we're built on the Oracle stack, which gives us plenty of credibility. Obviously, they're an enormous company and it's a unified data model. Universal release means everyone is always on the newest version. No one has to come out and install anything. You don't have to download anything. The system just upgrades itself. Next, we can handle multiple currencies, uh, multiple languages, no matter where you're doing business in the world, Liberator, uh, NetSuite will be tax compliant. Uh, it will handle all sorts of currencies. So these are, the <clears throat> pardon me, these are the industries that NetSuite works really well in. We've got clients in software, services, advertising, media, publishing, not-for-profit, manufacturing, wholesale distribution, and retail. So if you're in wholesale distribution, there's a warehousing management module in NetSuite, which has a barcode scanning. Oops. Um, with me. If you're doing time-based billing around contracts, if you're a services business, um, there's a NetSuite module for that too. So I'll try to get through these next two slides. They're, they're, they're pretty dry, but it just gives you an idea as to what NetSuite comes with out of the box. Finance and accounting, billing, revenue management, financial planning, financial reporting, global accounting and consolidation. Order management, procurement, inventory, production, warehouse management, supply chain management. Once again, these come all out of the box with NetSuite. CRM, I use a CRM on a daily basis to track prospects, uh, the human capital management portal, we have what's called an employee center. That's where we can log our annual leave. That's where we can check our pay slips. Uh, project management speaks for itself. All right, so NetSuite exists amongst a huge ecosystem of what we call suite app partners. Uh, there's a lot of third party companies that have developed their software within NetSuite. For example, uh, Infinite Cloud built a payroll system in NetSuite that's compliant with New Zealand and Australian law. So that's all things payroll, superannuation, government taxes and compliances. There is TrueCloud Solution. They've developed a point of sale software within NetSuite. So if NetSuite for some reason can't do it at its core, we'll extend out to the ecosystem of suite apps to incorporate any additional aspect of the business. NetSuite has been designed for a really quick implementation. I mean, it's still a, an enormous business system and it can affect everyone in the business. So it's not, you know, a couple of hours. Um, but like I said, it's a, that configuration rather than that customization. So turning on and off modules, depending on what your business needs. We've dealt with a lot of different companies uh, and seen almost every combination possible. So there really isn't anything we can't handle at this stage. Of course, NetSuite is also available on devices such as iPad, um, Android and iPhones. So it can be utilized away from your primary business machine, which is obviously something very helpful given where the world is at at the moment. Our implementation approach, so NetSuite as a software piece is one thing, but it's really important to consider the implementation partner, and that is the group of people who are gonna be merging maybe your entire business across to NetSuite as smoothly as possible. There's, there's quite a bit involved. Uh, when a company signs up to NetSuite through Liberat IT, we'll start a two-day workshop process. In these workshops, our consultants will be working with you. It's very much a collaborative effort. Um, we'll be doing everything we can to best understand your business, and we'll start ascertaining a more improved business design. We'll create a project plan where we'll outline the tasks and the deliverables. Uh, these will often incorporate data migrations and system integrations to pre-existing software. For example, if you want NetSuite to integrate with your current website, we can do that. If we need to develop some custom script to integrate with any industry specific software application, we can do that too. Often there are connectors available. Um, and then finally, we will do a uh, project closeout and a support agreement. We usually like to elect a NetSuite champion. Uh, this is someone who will be uh, 
an administrator, a power user that he or she'll be able to continue to manage and further optimize your NetSuite system. And of course, we're always only a phone call away to help as well. There's over 4,000 organizations using NetSuite. That number is continually on the rise. Uh, there's some big ones here you may recognize, some smaller local companies as well. Gives you the idea of the kind of companies that have, um, that have the NetSuite's help expand group on our six big ones out there. What have we learned? Uh, look, it goes without saying that the reliability of NetSuite, the 99.9% .9 uptime is something that everybody loves. It's obviously extremely accurate, We're not losing or, uh, or um, losing any accuracy when jumping between systems or pulling data out of Excel and putting it somewhere else. It's accessed anywhere, anytime, which obviously every piece of software does that now, but it's, it's more important than ever to be using cloud-based software for that exact reason, especially with people working from home. Super easy to use. Uh, Paul will give you an idea of our, we'll give you a demonstration of our user interface. It's very, very intuitive, integrates to other systems. Uh, and the most important one is full visibility. When everyone's running off the same data, um, particularly the business leaders, you're seeing absolutely everything in the business or just particular summaries, which are, which are most suited to your role. Speaking of business leaders, I will now hand you over to... Paul, who will be able to give you a live demonstration of NetSuite itself. Just bear with me, Paul. Thank you, uh, Julius. Time. So if you could stop sharing and I'll share my screen. All right. I've now stopped sharing. Thank okay. you. Okay, Julius, can I just ask, can you see a NetSuite screen with a green banner along the top? I certainly can. Cool, thank you very much. And you can hear me okay? Yes. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming along to this introduction to NetSuite webinar. Um, as Julius said, my name is Paul Beatty. I've been uh, with NetSuite for many, many years now. And um, before that, I've been doing ERP systems for coming up 25 years now. What I want to do today is take you over uh, two facets of NetSuite. The first is a look and feel and some of the philosophy behind visualization in NetSuite and having all data in one place so you can easily see what is going on in your business and therefore make decisions. And secondly, I want to run through a fairly basic transaction using a warehouse and distribution company as a model. And that will start from a quote go to a sales order, we're going to be out of stock of some stuff. So we need to order that stock in and uh, then produce item fulfillments and invoice it out. Like I said, uh, like Julia said, the NetSuite is a very big system. I would normally do demonstrations for four to six hours covering everything that a, a prospective customer would uh, like to see. So uh, oh, one thing I just want to say, um, yes, as Julia said, I am currently locked down in Auckland and so are all my neighbours and I've noticed this morning that uh, the internet uh, here is going not as fast as usual. So uh, please excuse me or even let me know if some of the screens lag. So what you're looking at here is a classic NetSuite screen. Uh, you'll see there's graphs, there's some data on the left hand side, there's some reminders, I, these are alerts of things that, that you need to do. Um, I'm looking at this, if you look in the top right hand side here as the financial controller. So NetSuite is a role based system. And if you look uh, at the menu I've just dropped down there, on my demo system here, I, I have maybe 20 roles here. Usually anyone would just have one role in the system. And as far as they are aware, that is the only role. That is what NetSuite looks and feels like. So for example, if I was a sales rep, I would log in and every day I would look at uh, NetSuite. And in my mind, NetSuite is red. Um, and what NetSuite is all about is opportunities and forecasts and customers and leads. And it's directing me to what I need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So for example, I've got some opportunities to close. I've got some tasks that are overdue. I've got some calls that are overdue. I've got a whole ton of leads and forecasts. I've got some open quotes that are over $20,000. Now that's an interesting portlet. The 
idea is that NetSuite comes with a whole lot of information that you can just natively put in front of people, but every business is different. Everyone has their own magic that makes them successful. In this organization, it's really important to put in front of the sales rep's eyes every morning when they log in all the big important quotes. And that's a very simple change to a search or to a report, which is to just show quotes that are over $20,000. This is what we expect when we implement NetSuite. We're going to get the, optimi uh, the, the visualization to a certain degree, but what we want to do is train people within organizations so that they can go around and go, okay, why have you got a list of bit of paper there of all these names on? Are oh, they all my big important quotes? So that someone within your organization could actually create a portlet and show that on the screen. If I go into another role now, and I'm going to pop into the warehouse staff role. And as far as the warehouse manager is concerned, NetSuite is orange. And it's an inventory system. It's about shipping and receiving uh, an inventory, if you see up the top here. But another thing what we try to do with NetSuite is not have people have to go through the menu structure to do their job. That's old school. What we're trying to do is put the information in front of people. So when you design these dashboards, what we're trying to do is that the first time that a, for example, warehouse manager might see the system, it's already set up with how they're going to use it. So if they want to fulfill some orders, instead of going through that menu structure, they just click on orders to fulfill. They click on that and now they can see all the orders to fulfill here. This is of course, if you don't have a barcode scanning system and you're going to do that directly from NetSuite and we can do either of course. Now, something else I want to talk about on this screen is that we have a list of sales orders. When I go into organizations uh, before they take on NetSuite, what I find is people running up and down stairs often with picking slips. And here's your batch of picking slips for the next hour. And then someone will come running down and say, I've got an urgent order. We need to put this at the top. And I'm thinking that's a lot of running up and down stairs. What we try to do is list for the warehouse staff in a WD situation, the orders in the order that the business feels they should be picked. So for example, if based in Auckland as I am, and I need to get all the orders for the South Island out by 2 p.m., well, let's put all those orders up the top. That's a very simple thing to do. So at the top here, we'll see all the orders for the South Island. If another order comes in for Dunedin, it'll just pop in the top there. As far as the warehouse staff, they don't care. They just do the next order. They're not rifling through bits of paper. And it's that sort of efficiencies that we try to get everyone to think about. And it is a change to their current processes, but it's trying to optimize and, and make sense of current processes to make them more efficient. In the same way, um, if an urgent order, well, we can put a checkbox on the sales order. And that's that little checkbox says urgent order. So therefore, this portlet is smart enough to then go, ah, if that checkbox is ticked, it goes to the very, very top above the South Island orders. And that's got to be the next order to be picked because the customer service person has indicated that this must go out as soon as possible. I'm going to go back now to the controller role. So in the controller role here, we've got some KPIs at the top. Now, everyone talks about KPIs. It's been a buzzword for quite a few years now. The key thing to remember about KPIs is they're nothing more than key performance indicators. Uh, sorry, key performance indicators and nothing more than summarized reports. And a summarized report is nothing more than a collection of data or what we call granular data. So when we are implementing NetSuite, while yes, we're worried you know, that we're gonna get you the reporting, what we're really worried about is, is the granular data going to be available in the records, i.e. the customers, the vendors, the items, or the transactions, i.e. the purchase orders or the bills or the invoices, to be able to collect them up and then be able to present them either as reports that you might print out or on screen like this. So for example, if I, um, anything in blue here, I can click down on and into. So if I want to go and look at my receivables, I'm clicking on that. I'm running the report that that KPI is based on. If I want to click a bit further, I want to look at this 217,000 that Alan's owes, I click that. Now I'm running the uh, detail report that that is based on. And this one here interests me, this transaction, it's an invoice. 
I'm going to draw all the way down to the granular transaction of the invoice, four clicks. And I now can see that there's an invoice here. I want to go through the item. Now it's in blue, so I can click through to this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click through to the, my IKEA rocking chair. And I'm going to open it up into a new tab. So you can have new tabs, new windows uh, opening up. And if I click into that, I can see all the information about this item. Of course, I can have a picture of this item. I've got some custom fields here. It's eco-friendly. It's good to know. I want it displayed on my website. I've got some specifications coming in here. So this specifications is a custom field. We can create custom fields in about 30 seconds. And again, it's something that we try to train your staff to do because rather than spending a lot of money on Liberate, once you've got the system set up, what we try to do is pass the IP across the table so that you can do a lot of this work yourself. And we have a support organization and we have an optimization consultant that does free visits every year. But what we really, really want is to use those just as backup so that you can truly own your ERP system. Um, you'll notice here I've got some custom fields in Chinese script. So we can have any script that we want in here. I can have field help. I can click there and it's also in Chinese script. Or if I click down to the specifications, it's in English. And I can see things like the item 360. Here's my sales and margins for this chair. I can see some 3A matching. I can see open purchase orders. I can see the 12 month sales for this item. So all of this information is available. Of course, we've got pricing and the GL structure there. We've got special pricing and promotional pricing. That's for another time. But at the core level, we've got the base information that we need to know about this product. If I go back to the invoice and I want to look at the customer now, I'm going to right click on this and look at the customer tab. Now, once you see the customer tab here, again, it's got the same idea of a customer 360. So I can see how many orders, how many fulfillments have been, how many invoices, uh, what the last year's sales were. So it's bringing all the information that that I need to know about this customer in a summary level. Of course, I can then go into the transactions and actually see the detail of this, but hey, it's good to see the summary. I can see the open invoices and credits. I can see the top sold items, the last 12 month sales. Now that uh, items that have been sold recently, that's really, really important because now I can start seeing what items haven't been sold recently, what items they used to buy, but haven't purchased for a while what consumer balls, and you know there's a six month cycle that they go through, maybe coffee beans. So we can start doing reports to email them out of NetSuite and say, hey, I think your consumable, your printer cartridge, whatever is running out, I think you need to buy more. Those emails can be set up automatically based on this transactional information of what they purchased and when they last purchased it. What we can also have here, because it's a CRM system as well, is contacts. We can have activities. So following up on overdue invoices, classic credit control, but we can also follow up on sales orders. There's a query with an invoice. We can follow up on, um, on leads. As well, we've got email messages here. So you can email out of NetSuite, you can email sales orders out of NetSuite, you can email purchase orders out of NetSuite, and they stay with the transaction and also go to the customer and the vendor record. And of course, you've got the attachments or the quote that sits with it. I'm going to head back now to the invoice. And I actually want to go through and have a look at the sales order that this invoice came from. Because in NetSuite, everything stays attached. So if I go up to the sales order here, created from, if I click through to that, I'm going to see the sales order that was the original source transaction. If I go down here, I see that the sales order actually had a lot of items in it. That invoice was only part of it. And if I go up here, I can actually see it's only partially fulfilled. So there's still stuff that's still on back order here. And again, I often go into sites where the back orders are all held in manila folders uh, in the warehouse office, as opposed to sitting in the ERP system with a report being run. And as soon as that order comes in, it's released and it can be shipped off. It's just, just very easy automated stuff. 
If I go to related records in this sales order that I'm at the moment, I can see all the records that have made up that. So there have been three item performance out of this. There have been two invoices created and one purchase order. So there's been a drop ship order or a special order, sometimes called a back-to-back -back order, linked to this transaction as well. Everything is available in one place. Remember, I got here because of something on my dashboard showed me that I was concerned about something and I drilled down and now I can start unwinding that. And that's something we do try to do with the alert system is trying to get algorithms to work out what is about to go wrong so you can fix it before the customer starts yelling at you. So I'm gonna click my home uh, icon up here. You all recognize the home icon on a normal website. Click home and I'm back to my dashboard. And I'm gonna close these two tabs. Now, if I want to put up more KPIs there, NetSuite comes with about 200 standard KPIs. You'll see them all down here. So if I want to see some, you know, operating expenses coming in, I want to, let's see what else. I want to see some uh, sales on the cash basis, and I would like to know total open opportunities. So it's not just all financial based, it can be quantity as well. If I click done, I've now got this information here and I can now start comparing it to other periods. But I can also add custom KPIs. Now a custom KPI is based on what in NetSuite we call a safe search, which is similar to a query. And if I go and search for some, I want to uh, bring my SAS customer search back, click on done. It's now in the KPI. You'll see the little C there. And I actually want to move this up. So it's going to be four from the bottom now. I click save and very, very quickly, I have four new KPIs there. And this is again why we try to train people within the organization to be able to do this type of stuff because it's very simple to visualize. In fact, the problem is trying to work out what to visualize, what not to visualize. So if I look at my SAS customer search here and I see there's been three, of course, if I click on that, I'm going to run the KPI or the search and three companies meet that criteria. I want to go and edit the search to show you how I built up that save search. So very simply, I chose a town and city that started with S. Why did I do it what started with S? For no other reason than I could. Uh, I want the date of the last order. Again, of course, if I click in here, I can see I want the date of the last order before or after, within, whichever you want. What category? Well, of course, customer categories is a very, very important. No, no, no company I know of doesn't have customer categorization in some way. Well, I want any that are not government in this particular search. And what are the items? Ah, so. This search is actually bringing back items of what I mentioned just earlier. They haven't bought these cameras and these are old cameras that I'm looking at here. They bought them before 2013. And the sales managers suddenly realized they've got a database here full of contacts that have purchased off the company. Well, I think I should get the salespeople to phone them up. So they are creating this list. They're gonna place it on the dashboard of the salespeople and get them to phone them and put a little activity or note into the customer record. Equally, this can also be used as the basis of an EDM out of the company. And again, the EDM will appear on the contact record. Did it make it? Was it bounced back? Have they opened it? Have they maybe uh, drilled through to your website, which could also be a net suite and maybe purchase another camera. And now we have a complete circle. Just while we're in safe searches, um, if I wanted to have another item here, well, there's all my fields. It's a customer search. So I've got all my fields, including custom fields that are sitting in the customer record. But I can also go and find other fields as well. Sales reps fields, serial number fields. I can more or less bring anything back I want that is sitting in NetSuite. What are the results I want? Well, I don't want the fax number anymore, so I'm going to remove that. Um, but I want to add maybe the top line of the address in there. And that's going to come back. 
And I can also uh, email this out. And not only can I email it out, I can email it out to certain people on a schedule. So every Monday morning at nine o'clock, this report is run and emailed to the people on that list. Or if something happens to that, uh, a certain event happens and in Liberate, because we use NetSuite, of course, uh, we use it not in a WD, but in a project or services uh, capacity. And if anyone logs a case, because there's a case management system in NetSuite, logs a case at a severity level of number one, that automatically creates an email that goes to the senior leadership team. So of course, while the support technical people will receive that uh, alert on their dashboards and immediately get onto it, in case they're in a meeting for the next hour, and this is an alert level one, then someone in the senior leadership team is aware of it and can take action. I don't want to be able to be sitting at my dashboard all the time waiting for this to come in. I just want to be alerted when it does happen. We've used that in a WD situation where customer service people kept changing sales orders after the items had been picked and the customer did not want to stop that happening. So what they did was allowed it to happen but when it did happen, it sent an alert out to the warehouse manager to let them know that while the picking slip, they didn't have a WMS system, a uh, barcode system, um, had been picked, the sales order had actually changed. And that really made things efficient. So if I want to change uh, my dashboard here, again, very simple to do and give people training on how to do this. Because we're very keen for you. For I, I love going into companies you know, year after um, they've gone live and seeing the dashboards to be quite different because someone, for example, has decided they need a trend graph here. And as you're starting to get to know with NetSuite, there is a lot of pre-set up standard graphs that are available, but there's also these custom KPIs. So we can create your own graphs. More importantly, you can create your own graphs. And I'm just going to click the one average days overdue or maybe average days to pay. I want it in red. It's going to be quarterly, could be monthly, could be yearly. I'm going to save that. And very quickly, I have a graph. If I want to see that graph in a different way, I can click monthly or daily and it will all come out. I can also produce this as a PNG image, a JPEG image, export it out using board reports. That's a very big graph sitting in the middle of my main dashboard. So I don't want it there. I'm going to move it over to there. I actually don't want this KPI meter anymore. So I'm just going to remove it completely. Now, as you saw, there was a very big graph that was sitting in the middle of your home dashboard. And it's really quite important real estate, your home dashboard. So what I suggest people do is to put dashboards on all of these tabs because all of those can act as dashboards as well. I don't need to see the average days overdue on a daily basis. I do like to see it on a weekly or monthly basis. So for Liberate IT, for my dashboard, I have all that sort of graphs and information and financial ratios sitting in my financial tab. And to be honest, what you're seeing here is more or less a copy of the dashboards that I use on a weekly basis and then extract out for the board reports. But I can also go and look at vendors and have dashboards set up for vendors, number of POs, number of orders received. I click back to home and I'm going to remove this one here as well and have my bank balance up, which I think is much more important for a uh, financial controller to see on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, over here, I've got my reminders portlet. The reminders portlet is probably one of the most important portlets to, to, to ensure that people don't need to get emails or phone calls or text messages or Teams IM or Google, or Google messages. They just get an alert here. So for example, if uh, Julius takes you out for a cup of coffee, what he'll do is uh, take a photo of that cup of coffee, of the receipt of that cup of coffee, I should say, on his app, NetSuite app, which comes by Apple and Android. He'll put in some information about the, the, the details of the transaction. And then that transaction will be saved and turn up in his manager's reminders portlet. They'll click on it like this, or they might even do that on the app itself, on his version of the app. Go through and see that, ah, there's three items here. What's Julia's been spending? 
and I can go along, I'll just make it smaller, and see here's the file. And here's that Cafe Noir spending some money for the company, taking out a customer or a prospective customer. They click approve, the supervisor approves that, that then goes off their dashboard. But what it does do is go on to the accountant's dashboard. And that's exactly how it works in Liberate, and it can work in all of our customers and in your site. No more paper, no more photos sitting on SharePoint. It all goes through the ERP system. The physical receipt can be thrown away because it's now sitting in NetSuite. Click back home again. And things like SAS credit check pending. Well, that's a, uh, all of our customers talk about, oh, you're going to take a prospect to a customer, but hang on, we need to do a credit check on that. So there's normally a blocker there. And so that blocker means it's off system while they sort it out. Well, we suggest we'll put a little custom field on there so that when a prospect is turned into a customer, allow it to happen, but put a little wee alert that turns up on the credit controller's dashboard so they can go in and see the two customers that need the credit um, check done. And when that's done and approved, they click the box, it goes off that, and now the customer can transact. And of course, they can upload all the files, all the credit control documents, any contracts to that customer record. Again, just trying to cut down the amount of emails and paper being shuffled around businesses. The um, yeah, yes, I think the last thing that I really want to show here before I go in and do a transaction is this field up the top, which is the global search field. Global search field is how people tend to interact with NetSuite. So if I type in something like AUS, I'm going to get back a whole ton of transactions and records. There's a vendor, there's some opportunities with AUS in it. So I only see customers. So what I do is I type the first two letters in colon or the first three letters and I get just the customers have AUS somewhere in that record. You see Cons Plumbing, it's not just in the name, it is somewhere else in the record. So I can do that for the transaction that I was in just before. I'm now in my recent records or my history. And the invoice that I went in earlier when we first started was 1593. If I type 1593, I've got my invoice here. I can click straight through to it. So someone phones up, they have an inquiry with the invoice. You type in 1593, and I'm back in that same invoice where we started this presentation. It's just I've gone there two different ways. What I can also do is search for people. So people phone up. While they might be phoning to inquire about a invoice or a purchase order, it's actually Pippa that's calling. So if I just type in Pippa's name, because it's a CRM system as well, have all the contact records, you'll see four transactions or records have come up. I'm clicking CO colon and it's just Pippa. And I can go through to Pippa's record. I can even get an image of Pippa there. I can see some comments. I can start talking to Pippa about her son, Kyle, who's a promising P-class sailor. And thus that whole idea that you have hundreds of people that you can start building up some commentary around them and be able to have discussions that are that, that about them. You can also know when her birthday is so that you can send a little voucher out to her on her birthday. These are very simple things that we can do. And I'm going to ruin it for Julius now and say the birthday voucher we got last week, that wasn't me remembering because I've got a great memory of all the 30 staff in Liberate and when their birthdays are. That's because I've got their birthdays in the employee record of NetSuite. And every month in my alerts, in my reminders, I get a list of the people whose birthdays it is that month. And I can Ouch. then go buy them vouchers. So, yeah. But Julius, it was heartfelt. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. Um, and then from here, of course, I can click through to Alan's Computer Care. And I am now back in that customer record. Just as we started it and I clicked through from a different way, I'm now in the customer record via the contact. Same data, one data source. All that data is exactly the same. And it's just a matter of how you find that data. I'm going to click back home now. And that's all I really wanted to talk about on the visualization and the philosophy of visualization. The last thing I really want to say before I go on and do a trial transaction is that it never stops. 
a system like NetSuite should constantly be optimized. And we talk about it a lot in our um, sales engagements is that having somebody on your site that can constantly improve the system, optimize the system, your business will change over time. Every business changes over time. Having the ability to change your ERP system, one, having an ERP system that can be changed easily, but secondly, having someone that knows how to do it and has the time to do it is vital. And that's what gives you the edge on your competitors. Okay, let's go do a transaction. So Liberate, as, uh, sorry, NetSuite, as I was mentioning, is a CRM system. So we have leads and prospects and customers uh, available in the system. So this is a prospect. So I'm typing in PR for prospect and it's a company called Corey's. So there's the prospect. I'm gonna go into that prospect record. So prospect is at a probability of 80% of it quote requested stage. Let's go look at the opportunity for the prospect. So with customers, you can either just do quotes straight out of the system to them, or you can have an opportunity, which of course starts well before they needed pricing. It's when you hear there's a tender or an RFP that uh, has been released. So you create an opportunity against the prospect or against the customer itself, if they're an existing customer, and you work that through with actually getting pricing to them might actually be quite late in the piece. I'm going to go into this this opportunity. And I see that we've been talking about some cameras for this customer and a, a monitor. They've asked for a quote. So I'm going to go through and uh, create a quote for this customer. And if I click new quote now, it's going to take the items that have been listed in the opportunity and automatically put them on the quote. Now, once we've got the new quote up there, I can add new items to that quote if I so desire. So they've come back to us and said, oh, look, I'd like to add some uh, telephony items to this quote. Well, that's fine. I can type down here in the bottom left-hand corner, just in the normal ERP system. But what I rather like about NetSuite is I can very simply, using the add multiple, go and find my telephony items. And how we set up your inventory, or how we both set up your inventory is really important so we can take advantage of some of this native NetSuite technology uh, functionality. You know, I want 500 of those, it's going to be a great order this one, 234 of those, 120 of those, and 300 of those. I click done and that will now add those items to the quote, but I've got an alert coming up just to let me know that there are none in stock, which is what I wanted. And notice on this one, there are zero back ordered, but there are five that are currently on order on their way. So this is important. So the sales rep or the customer service person can start talking to people about when that, whether the goods are available to be shipped immediately or when they're likely to turn up. If I save that, I can just save it. I can save and print it. I can save and email it. I'm just going to save this one. If I save and email it, it's going to go out of the system. And of course, we can make that PDF look anything you want. We can have pictures of the items on the PDF if you so desire. The important thing is, though, that when you do email it out, it's going to sit in the messages area here. And it's going to uh, show the date and the time that it was emailed out. But most importantly, any replies that come back in will go into your Gmail or your Outlook system. But a copy will also stay on the transaction record. And if you reply from Outlook or Gmail, there's a little bit of code there, which is going to also put it on the transaction record in NetSuite. So, and again, to use Liberate as an example, if there's a complaint about an invoice, I don't go look at the email chain on Outlook when I need to get involved. I go look at the email chain that's sitting in the invoice record, the transaction, and I can see all the backwards and forwards and then make a decision on what to do. That 360 ability for information. So this quote's gone out there. Um, if I want to turn that into a sales order, they phone up and say, hey, I want to do a sales order. I want to order those items. First thing that person will ask is, well, what's the quote number? What's well, quote 120? They might have also looked up uh, the person's name. They might have dropped quarries. But they, look, they quoted the quote number, quote 120. 
Um, oh, something else I wanted to mention too, if you wished your sales reps to see it, we can show the estimated gross profit, the estimated gross profit percent, the estimated cost over here. Estimated always because until landed costs uh, have been added in, we can't tell you exactly what the price of that's going to be. That's a month end margin analysis. But this is what we estimate the uh, gross profit percent will be. If I click sales order now, two things are going to happen. The first is the quote is going to turn into a sales order and the prospect is going to turn into a customer, which is where that little field uh, that I talked about earlier about credit check, because this can all happen automat automatically unless you want to block her in there for a credit check. What we're trying to do is let this happen so the salesperson can just go out and carry on selling without having to do a whole lot more administration. Now you notice here that's letting me know that I've got a whole lot of things that aren't in stock at the moment. I'm going to save that sales order. Now this will take just a little while to save because one of the items on there is a special item. The monitor automatically will create a drop ship um, transaction, i.e. a PO will be created against just that row because in the item record it's been flagged that this item is never held in stock, it's always ordered um, uh, in from the supplier and sent directly out to the customer. So that sort of automation is something that, that, that again, we can set up in the system, we just need to understand uh, how your system operates. And so you see here now, I've got my sales order here, I'm going to click I'm going to click through to that, and I have my PO number here. So if I click to my sales order, I've got my sales order has been saved, but I'm looking at it going, well, this is actually really useless for me because it's not showing me anything to do with this PO. It's not showing me anything to do with, has it anything been shipped yet? And that's because the sales order form that I'm looking at is designed for not the inventory person or the customer service person, it's designed for the sales rep person, which is why it's got the, uh, the percentages there. NetSuite, you can have as many forms as you like. I'm going to change this to a SAS sales order. And you can set to a certain role or even to a certain person the form that they see when they open up the transaction. So that whole idea that that data is there, it's just what you decide to show the users. If I save this now, you'll notice that in this form, unlike the last form, the PO number is compulsory. So I can't save it, because it's got the little asterisk there, until I put in a PO number. When I save it now, and you'll see already down the bottom, we've got committed, fulfilled, invoiced, backordered, available. These custom these column fields rather are now available uh, for the people that need to see that type of information and again NetSuite comes with templates for forms so you could use those straight away but what we try to do is get people to think about what that form should look like what the order of the fields should be in either going this way or the order of the fields that are available up here there shouldn't be a lot of information here that you don't need to see. But something you will notice is that the percentages for gross profit have gone from this form because that was a sales rep requirement, not the requirement of the, op of the operations people who are going to be sending the stuff out. But what is here is create PO. And you'll see here, if I click down on this, PO 376 has been created for these monitors. And here's the PO here. And it's to linked up here to the sales order. I want to go and approve that. Um, I don't have the, uh, the button because I'm not supposed to be doing it from the controller role, but I'm cheating the system uh, as I can. And I approve that. Now it's waiting to be received. Now I'm going to go and receive this. If I look at my sales order here, you'll see that this is back ordered and nothing's available. If I go receive this in, it's actually not a dropship order. It's what we call a special order. It's coming into the warehouse uh, to be uh, then shipped out. If I receive these in, 
I can put some landed cost against this. Now the landed cost fields here are up to you and we'll work out how you do your landed cost. We can hook these into transactions if we so desire. But for this, I'm just going to receipt these two monitors in. Once they've been receipted in, uh, and we can upload the delivery docket if we wish to the receipt. The, uh, it then goes into a status awaiting the bill. So as far as the accounts people are concerned, there's a bill pending. When that bill comes in, as long as it's for $105 or $210, $105 is a rate, and for two, all they'll do is click bill and save it and the transaction will be complete and just awaiting for payment. There's no need to go and source the delivery docket or anything else like that because the goods, the inwards goods people have said these items have been received. Again, just making things automatic. So if I go back to my sales order now and I want to refresh the screen, automatically you see that I have got these two monitors here are now available to be shipped. They're no longer on back order. They're now ready to be fulfilled. So I've got a whole lot of things that are not on back order and some things that are on back order. So I want to ship out these things, that these items that are not on back order. So I can go create my uh, picking slip now. Um, and once I've uh, picked the items, I'm going to fulfill them and ship them out the door. I might be adding freight onto them if I have integrate into the freight systems and we integrate all the freight and courier systems in New Zealand and Australia we can send out the manifest to their system. They'll come back in with a price. They'll come back in with a tracking number. We can record that tracking number here. That means we can now email it out to the customer, or if we don't wish to do that, we've got it here. And if the customer phones in, if Pippa phones in and says, hey, it hasn't turned up yet, your staff can go to the item fulfillment, find the tracking number. So. You'll notice that all the items possible to be fulfilled are here. I don't want, which means there's going to be some partially fulfilled telephony items. I don't want that. I just want to fulfill the items that I can fulfill in total. If I click save now, that's going to create a delivery note for me that I can print out. And if we've done the job right, the only thing that should be printed out of NetSuite should be delivery notes. That's the only physical bit of paper I like to see coming out of the system. And those items are now shipped. If I go back to sales order here, I'll see that those items are shipped. Now, as far as billing, you'll see there's a bill item here. I can just automatically bill those items out manually. A accounts clerk can get a list in the alerts or the reminders of all the items that have been fulfilled and invoice them out. What I prefer though, of course, is that an automatic routine is run every hour, maybe eight o'clock every night or 10 o'clock every night that picks up all the items that have been fulfilled for that day and creates invoices for them and automatically emails them out to your customers. There really is no reason that anyone should need to go in and check an invoice to make sure it's right. And I have a lot of discussions with uh, customers about this. We've got to eyeball it. Now I'm thinking, well, if the sales order's gone in correctly, then there should be no reason you need to eyeball an invoice to send it out the door. That's just a waste of time. So let's get the sales orders right to start with. And on that, I suggest that they automatically email and order confirmation from the sales order to the customer and let them make sure that it's gone in correctly. Uh, if that's correct, the invoice, once the items are shipped, should be gone. You'll see I've got a status here now of pending billing par partially fulfilled. That's because I have indeed sent out these items. They've been picked, packed, and fulfilled, but they've not been invoiced yet. And I've got these items down the bottom that are waiting to be invoiced. And you'll see my related records, I'm building up all my transaction history for these items, for this order. So how do I get these items into stock here? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. First off, you can just do a straight PO. So I could go into vendors, purchases, enter a purchase order. We all know how a purchase order works. That's just you know, 101 uh, WD. But what we try to do is on the, um, on the inventory record is 
choose things like reorder points. What we try to do is have an automatic calculation for reorder points. So NetSuite will run algorithms to help you with a suggested order report. And that's some of the uh, algorithms that, uh, that it works with. Safety stock, lead times, uh, preferred stock levels, that type of thing. And you'll see down here that I've got stock in Melbourne and stock in Sydney. It's a multi-location system, of course. And I've also got damaged goods areas because I can have locations within a warehouse, two locations within a warehouse. So if I go up to my, um, my shortcuts and I click on order items, and I just want to check stuff in Sydney. I can also check stuff just for certain vendors. I can come down here and see, here's my telephony items that I that NetSuite is suggesting I need to order in. So of course, this should have happened as soon as those the, that sales order was created for these items. Uh, there's 106 on back order, there's 50 on order, there's a reorder point of 100. Preferred stock to 120, I'm suggesting you, sorry, the computer is suggesting you should order 176. You know that you actually want to order 200 of these, and but you're getting a special deal, so you're getting these for $9.50. Then you come along here, it's already got preferred suppliers. Now you choose whether you want preferred suppliers or not. We can have multiple suppliers set up against each vendor, each item rather. And if I click submit to this, it's automatically going to go and create purchase orders against these items. And of course, if that list was yeah, 200 long, you eyeball it, everything looks okay, you make a few changes, there may be six or seven vendors in there, NetSuite will go away and create POs to all those vendors. And then it could automatically email them to the vendors if you desired, or you might put a blocker in there because you want these things to be approved. And refresh that, and you'll see I've now got a PO for these items in the system. And in the same way, if I go now and receipt these in, I'm just going to approve them, they will now be available. So that sales order is going to sit there with these items on back order, with a back order report for you to uh, look at until such time as either these items are received into stock or you close that, that, that order. I'll go back to my sales order now and just refresh it again. You'll see that all my items, even though I haven't, a uh, bill has not been created for this purchase order yet, or for this item receipt yet, they're off back order, they're ready to be shipped and it's now able to be fulfilled. And it's at pending billing partially fulfilled stage. So all of that without paper. That's all I really wanted to run through in this very quick uh, demonstration of NetSuite. It's an introduction to NetSuite, but what I'd love to do is uh, understand a little bit more about your business, whether it be a WD, whether it be project-based, whether it be manufacturing, uh, and then be able to work out how NetSuite can help, and then be able to do a demonstration to you, which will cover some of these basic things, but more to the point, it'll have your products in, and we'll be able to run through your unique scenarios. Uh, Julius. Thank you very much, Paul. I will now share my screen. This will stop the other screen sharing. Fantastic. So look, thanks everyone for joining that. Paul, we do have a few questions. Can I fire them to you now? There's just three questions here. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So one question's come in. I'm using, uh, I'm used to an access-based ERP, which often had bugs with updates. Does that occur in NetSuite? No, so we have two updates a year that, that NetSuite uh, produce out. And unlike an access database, which is pretty old technology, um, and, and it tends to be just, just you know, everyone were on different versions of it. So that makes it really hard to, um, to update. Everyone stays on the same version. So, yeah. so because of the, the twice annual cycle of the upgrades, which are tested and there's tens of thousands of customers uh, using the system, it is you know, the ability to get bugs in the system just really doesn't happen. Now, what you also get is the ability of what's called a release preview, so which is a cut of your data in the new version. So you can test through your transactions and your processes 
before you're actually upgraded. Now you are forced to upgrade, you'll get a date, 30, 40 days out, you'll get access to this release preview and you'll be able to test everything. And if there is a problem in it, then you let us know and we get onto it uh, before you're upgraded. Fantastic. Next question, can daily sales reports be set for a custom time range? Example, 3 p.m. to 3 p.m. You can do both date and time for anything. Fantastic. And finally, what triggers an online store sale, for example, Shopify, to show on NetSuite sales report? Okay, so e-commerce, e there's a couple of ways uh, to solve this. I'll answer Shopify in a minute, but NetSuite has its own e-commerce capability. And of course, if you're running a website with a NetSuite, which looks like a normal website, um, then automatically that transaction is sitting in NetSuite and, and you will not see it at all. To have a Shopify website or any other external website or e-commerce site feeding into NetSuite, we need to have an integration. For Shopify, there are standard integrations uh, that you need to put in place there. That will then suck the master data out into Shopify, i.e. the items and then the quantities and the prices. And then when a transaction happens in Shopify, it will send that transaction back into NetSuite where some rules need to happen. Is that customer already existing? So therefore add it to that record or create a new customer record for this transaction. The integrations uh, that are there, they are fairly good, but not perfect for every customer's circumstances. And when that's the case, we will write our own integration or get one of our third party EDI providers to write an integration between the external e-commerce site and NetSuite. Fantastic, thank you, Paul. And thank you everyone for joining us. These presentations happen once every two weeks. They are recorded, so there will be a chance to get this on recording if you need to share it with any of your colleagues. For the time being, thank you very much for joining. Have a great week all, and we hope to get in contact. If, if you do want to get in contact with us, check out liberateit.com uh, for more information. There's a contact us form, and you can reach us on our number. Have a great week all. Bye for now. We hope this video gave you the information you were after. If you have any further questions, get in touch with us using the links in the description. At Liberate IT, we can provide free consulting to understand your business system requirements, understand your company growth plans, and provide free NetSuite demonstrations. For more information, visit our website.